Closely following the creation, when the earth was fresh, Chigunai, the sun, fashioned his own son, Nayanisgani, into human form. This was the first Apache man. The son asked Nayanisgani to choose between a gun and a bow and arrow. Nayanisgani chose the bow and arrow, rejecting the gun. And then the son placed two mountains side by side for him. On one side was a brown mountain in which cattle, goats, pigs, horses, and all other kinds of livestock lived. Also inside the mountain were guns, blankets, and all of the manufactured metals. On the other side was a colorful mountain with blossoming sunflowers, agaves, fruiting cactuses, oak with acorn, and all of the other wild plants. Inside this mountain were deer, pack rat, and all of the other wild game. The son asked Nayanis Ghani on which of these mountains he wished to live. He chose the mountain brilliant with flowers and rejected the other, announcing that this would belong to Apaches and they to it, and they would live only by those things that this mountain possess. And so we lived this way for many centuries. Our elders taught us that before the reservation, we were healthy people. We ate good food from Nigusun, the earth, and we ran and traveled long distances. We lived our everyday life with great activity, and we lived with the land. These elders told us that if we could eat our Apache food and live our lives with the earth today, then we could be just as healthy. Living the ancestral Apache way of life made us strong, happy, and able to withstand hardship, sickness, and disease. This map shows how close we still are to that life. On the left of the map shows where the acorn trees grow, and on the right it shows our traditional homeland. We live in exactly the same places that the acorns live. To this day, we travel all over our Apache country to get acorns. Our lives and our land has changed greatly since we were forced onto the reservation 150 years ago. Now we have epidemics of disease like diabetes, kidney failure, liver disease, arthritis, and many cancers. These diseases are associated with poor diet. Now we need a large new hospital and a dialysis center to deal with our many health problems. Our modern diet started when the army forced us onto the reservation and kept us from the mountain and our healthy wild food. That is when they made us wait in ration lines for small portions of rotting beef, flour, non-native corn, coffee, sugar, and salt. This food made our people sick, and when the rations ran out, it made us starving and weak, open to disease and death. Our modern foods are the direct descendants of those ration foods, and we are eating them even though the army is no longer forcing us to. Most of our diet today is unhealthy. It is low in fiber, high in bad fat, high in cholesterol, high in salt, processed sugar, and it is high in food with synthetic chemicals. This diet is making us sick and weak with disease, just like it did at Old San Carlos. But we know from our elders that our pre-reservation diet is a very healthy one, and one that suits our bodies. With the help of elders, we have studied this diet at length. We know that our ancestral Apache diet is comprised mostly of wild plant food with over 200 edible wild plant species that include many kinds of green, seeds, nuts, fruit, root, stalks, flowers, and mushrooms. About half or less of the Apache diet's agricultural with over 12 varieties of our native corn, 
a few varieties of squash, and sometimes, but rarely, beans. The smallest portion of the Apache diet is wild meat, including about 30 species of animals, mostly small game, nine kinds of game birds, and many songbirds. Before the reservation, the most important individual food by volumes were nata and ikegosh, roasted agave hearts, chichil, emery oak acorns, naji and biyige, wild seeds, primarily sunflower family, mustards and grasses, and nata, corn. There are many things that we did not eat out of respect and safety. We did not eat fish, reptiles, and most things that live in the water. We did not eat hawks, eagles, owls, scavenger birds, or most water birds. We did not have dairy products. We did not have factory processed foods and sugar. And we did not usually eat big portions. We learned that our traditional diet is super healthy and nutritious. It is very high in fiber and protein. It is low in bad fats and high in healthy fats. It is low in cholesterol and low in salt. It is high in vitamins and minerals. It is sweet with natural sugars. It is rich in real whole foods and natural medicines. And it is filling without having much to eat. Our Apache diet is loaded with many highly nutrient-rich superfoods that are especially good for us. Most wild foods are far more nutrient-rich than modern agricultural or processed foods. These wild foods have nutrients that build immune systems and fight many diseases, including cancer. We learned that our diet follows the season. It ties us to the natural rhythm and cycle of the earth. And this connects us to the natural power of creation. We used to closely align our daily activities and ceremonies to the cycle of the day, the moon, and the season. Da, spring, is the time to harvest the first greens of emerging plant and the roots of many wild onions and wild potatoes and then the edible stalks and flowers. As the season progresses, the flowers dry up and the first berries and seeds of the year are ready to harvest. As spring ends, Nata Bikas and Nata Bitsin, century plant, is ready to harvest and roast. As the world heats up to she, summer, it is time to harvest the plentiful berries, cactus fruits, and greens. When summer is mature, it's time for acorns, some seeds, nuts, high mountain berries, and yucca fruit. When summer rain taper off to a ke, fall, it is time for the big harvest season of wild seeds and nuts, the corn and squash harvest and hunting. It is time to prepare the food for storage for winter and the coming year. Hi, winter is the cold time of the year. It is the time to eat the stored seeds, nuts, corn, and squash, dried fruit, nata, and game. It is time to eat healthy, fat-rich foods and meat. Today, very few of us can go out and harvest and hunt for all of our food, but we can still eat healthy if we learn how. One way is to learn how to choose foods at the grocery store that resemble wild foods and the Apache diet. When shopping, we can choose whole grains like brown rice and quinoa and beans. We can choose fresh fruits and vegetables and eat their skin. We can choose lots of greens and spinach and prepare them without fat, grease, or salt. We can choose unsalted nuts and seeds. 
We can choose lean red meat and chicken and eat less than one pound of red meat a week. We can avoid dairy, white flour, and anything with added sugar and salt. And we can cook from scratch and avoid packaged foods. We can still harvest, hunt, and grow at least some of our Apache foods if we learn how. If you would like more information about harvesting wild Apache food or growing traditional Apache food in a garden, then please contact elders and knowledgeable people in your own family or any of these resources. Our ancestors' relationship with food was personal, respectful, and spiritual. We can choose to have that relationship ourselves and choose a life connected with the rhythm of Nicholson and our food, plants, and animals.